Of course, it is very important in your major, I mean artificial intelligence, in which you are trying to recreate intelligence or reproduce intelligence in an artificial manner. I think it is very important to start with understanding the meaning of human intelligence in order to be able to reproduce this human intelligence but in an artificial way. Also, we should be able, and I mean you should be able in your measure, to be acquainted with some related and overlapped concepts in the area of intelligence, such as comprehension, perception, abstraction, uh, and many other uh, concepts, uh, we will highlight some of them. Also, you have to know cover uh, to know some about the relationship between intelligence and knowledge, and also the multiple intelligence. What is the meaning of multiple intelligence? And also, you should be acquainted with the assessment of IQ and, intelli uh, and intelligence or human intelligence. In our lecture today, we, I will give you uh, the definition of human intelligence and I will highlight some related and overlapped, uh, overlapped uh, concepts. But in the next following lectures, we will cover more about the relationship between intelligence and the knowledge and the different uh, the meaning of multiple intelligence and what about the assessment of iq i mean intelligent quotient uh, 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 and uh, or to assess the human intelligence but before presenting the definition of intelligence i would like to raise an issue to reflect on it or to reflect on it in the human field we have measures for human iq do you think one day we will have artificial intelligence measures or scales or tests one might say or may say of course we do now yes we have some suggestions for that but i am not talking about impressions i mean well standardized measure of artificial intelligence with all psychometric characteristics including reliability validity cutoff point sensitivity uh, specificity uh, norms to transform raw score to scaled or standardized score and the intelligence uh, quotient or IQ uh, but in that case it will be AIQ artificial intelligence quotient also we need to collect data for norms from large representative sample of robots or of machines or of non-human intelligent agents, I think we need to reflect on this issue. Do you think one day we will have artific standardized artificial intelligence measure or scale? I think reflect, reflect on it. I think we have to wait and see. Before presenting the definitions, if I ask anyone, if I ask any layman about the human intelligence, what is the meaning of the human intelligence? He may say human intelligence is the intellectual capacity of humans. Other may say it is characterized by perception, self-awareness, and evolution. In addition to that, understanding and reasoning. 
A third person may say it includes the capacities to recognize patterns, comprehension, blame, problem solving, and use language to communicate. And may also one of them say intelligence enable humans to experience and think. So it is the way to think and to have an experience with different things. Be honest. Have you ever sat there looking at a horse and thought to yourself, why am I smarter than you, horse? Why can my kind build incredible things while you just stand there in a field eating grass? Why do we get to ride you and not the other way around? How did humans become so much more intelligent than you and everything else? Well, it turns out that one of the reasons, and I'm not joking about this, is memes. And we'll prove it as we explore how humans became intelligent. <laughs> Starting at 6, the brain. You cannot separate the emergence of human intelligence from the brain. Our chunk of bone-wrapped gray matter is nearly double that of mammals with a similar body size, and over the past 7 million years our brains have grown three times bigger, with much of this occurring in the past 2 million years alone. But our brains weren't simply cultivating mass. They were growing in certain areas to give us an advantage over other species. Our early ancestors saw their neocortexes expand, and while this part of the brain was originally devoted to processing visual information, we now use it to form language, emotions, and a sense of self as well. Later developments saw our brains improve their ability to solve problems, plan ahead, and work with others. But why did this happen? What caused our brains to start growing so much larger than our rival primates? At five, brains over brawn. The brain consumes more energy than any other tissue of equivalent size in the human body. If it were a random process on Task Manager, you'd shut down this resource-hogging software in a second. But curiously, Overall, human beings burn roughly the same amount of calories as primates of similar size. So how does our body cope with this huge brain drain? In 1995, Leslie Aiello and Peter Wheeler speculated that human bodies started diverting energy away from other processes to fuel our burgeoning brains. One place we humans are lacking in comparison to primates is muscle mass. Check out this ripped fella for example. He'd take your girl, your mom, and your heart with a single flex of his pecs. So, in exchange for being hunky monkeys, humans became smart instead. But what prompted this change? 4. Why so smart? For human brains to grow and intelligence to develop, there had to be an evolutionary cause or reason behind this change. So what was it? Harvard biological anthropologist Richard Rangham theorizes that the discovery of fire enabled us to boost our calorific intake by using it to cook meat. Cooked meat digests much easier and releases more calories, and more calories means more energy for brain growth. This has the knock-on effect of giving you more time to think, create, and explore, as opposed to our rivals who had to spend all day foraging for low-calorie fruits and vegetables. Another theory links brain growth to bipedal movement. Scientists previously believed that walking on two limbs came as a result of our brain's development. Now, some think the opposite may be true. Humans became bipedal first, and the new way of moving forced the female birth canal to morph into a new shape. This new baby-making chamber allowed for the evolution of soft skulls in babies, and, in turn, this meant that baby brains could continue growing for two years after birth. 
How bipedal movement or indeed the discovery of fire came about is uncertain. Both of these could have arisen from a random occurrence because the reality is human super smarts might be the result of a simple mistake. Number three, evolutionary error. Evolution can occur as either microevolution, which involves tiny changes over a long time, or macroevolution, whereby huge sudden changes occur very quickly. The former could easily be the main reason for humans being so intelligent, with lots of little advancements coming as a result of brain-boosting behaviors such as cooking and bipedal movement. But it's also possible that one genetic freak may have been born with superintelligence, possibly mitochondrial Eve, and it was this mutation which later spread to the entire human race. One such mutation may have been the duplication of the gene SRGAP2, a gene literally called the humanity switch, and is responsible for the rapid evolution of the human neocortex. So, was the evolution of human intelligence a complete mistake? Was it destined to happen? Or was this gene deliberately placed in our DNA somehow? Number two, no more crazy. Psychologist Julian Jaynes was fascinated by how human consciousness came to exist. We are not only smarter than animals, we are also more self-aware. So how did this happen? How did ancient humans become conscious? Mr. Jane says they weren't conscious. And until recently, we were a race of schizophrenics. He theorizes that the brains of early man functioned as two separate entities, with the left side performing everyday tasks and the right side collating memories and experiences. Modern human brains are connected between the two hemispheres, but in the past, Jane's says they were mostly split. We say mostly because Jane's thinks they might have been connected through one now redundant part of our brain's language region. He believes this rudimentary bridge between our hemispheres would have caused early man to hear noise hallucinations, and that our early culture was derived from the shared discussion of what these voices meant. He even asserts that these sounds were responsible for the creation of gods and religion, and that the fully linked brain was only established in recent human history after complex societies began to form. And this leads us to the entry you've all been waiting for. At number one, memes. The social brain hypothesis states that human intelligence arose to help us survive in large and complicated social groups. Ideas like charity, friendship, enemies, and language were invented by random pockets of individuals trying to make their way in the world. But how were these concepts made ubiquitous across human society? Why do we all act in mostly the same ways? You guessed it, the meme. The word meme doesn't just describe a mass shared image on the internet. It was actually a term coined by Mrs. Garrison's one-time lover, Richard Dawkins. Dawkins used this term to refer to any idea which can be culturally transmitted and which changes over time. Anything from musical melodies and cooking through to social customs and new ways of jacking it can be considered memes, since they've all been generated, spread, and refined throughout mankind. Our brain's ability to process communication plays a fundamental role in this, as once we were able to share experiences and ideas with others, our society underwent something called memetic evolution. Memes spread throughout small populations of people like a virus, and eventually the ones which were most useful to human beings established themselves. This obviously helped the spread of technologies and ideas, but it may have also helped facilitate the development of consciousness. Certain aspects of your awareness are undoubtedly genetically transmitted, but many questions about the human self and our experiences arise from the sharing of thoughts and philosophies. Without this, we wouldn't even have the concept of consciousness in the first place. And so there you have it. Humans aren't special after all. The gap between us and animals is not as great as you or most people perceive it to be. And we've investigated just how big of a threat this is in our bonus video, 
humans aren't special, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and indeed all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool. We still love you. And we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. As you'll find out by watching our recent video, which asks if we can create consciousness. In order to be able to recognize the nature, the, to, uh, to, in order to be able to understand the human intelligence, you should be able to recognize the nature of intelligence and uh, the relationship between uh, knowledge, creativity, and uh, intelligence. Uh, some people more creative than others some and so some explanations of creativity at the people level uh, fall into cognitive or explanations or intelligence but really you have to know that uh, uh, creativity and uh, intelligence are interlinked but they are distinct there is very difference between uh, there is very difference between intelligence and creativity, but they are uh, interlinked to each other. Throughout this unit, you will explore the essential question, what is human intelligence? Intelligence can take on many forms, whether it involves having an amazing memory or the ability to create and form art. Writers, scientists, scholars, and artists have explored their intelligence and the different ways people can learn and process information. People process information in different ways, like being musically intelligent or being good at sports and learning through doing. Some people are book smart and learn through written language or a logical learner who's good at math and abstract problems. Others can be visual learners and need to see to understand. Let's take a look inside your brain. Your brain is like a muscle. The more you practice new skills, the more connections you make, the more your brain changes. The neurons in your brain have connections. These connections allow you to think and solve problems. The more you challenge your mind to learn, the more your brain grows. Our goal for this unit is to explore the essential question, in what different ways can humans be intelligent? As you read through a variety of informational texts and fiction, even poetry, begin gathering evidence to prepare to answer this question. A large body of research suggests that general intelligence is defined as the individual's ability to formulate and use abstract concepts. What do we mean by abstract concepts? Abstract concept is an idea that people can understand that has no and has no physical form. So abstract uh, ability, it is the ability to identify understand and communicate abstract concepts so abstract concepts is a significant element in human intelligence and uh, in order to, to, uh, to learn any language you should be acquainted with the concrete concepts and the abstract concepts in this language And the intelligence also defines the ability to solve problems and to develop new insights and ideas. What do we mean by insight? Insight is the capacity to gain an accurate and deep understanding of someone or something. And the idea means a thought or suggestion as to a possible course of action. Uh, 
David Wexler, one of the big names in the area of intelligence, uh, define, define the intelligence as the aggregate or global capacity of the individual to act verbosely, to think rationally, to deal effectively, effectively with his environments. And we mean by, uh, by the word rationally, we mean a reasonable or logical means, or in a sensible or logical manner. A different but overlapped uh, definition introduced by Lloyd Humphreys. Humphreys defined the intelligence as the result of the process of acquiring, storing in memory, retrieving, combining, comparing, and using a new context. Sir Sir Lepert had also a definition for intelligence. It is innate general cognitive ability. Innate general uh, uh, cognitive ability means that he emphasized the role of heredity, the role of genes, the role of chromosomes, uh, chromosomes the role of genetics. And the human intelligent, uh, intellectual competence must entail a set of skills of problem solving, enabling the individual to resolve genuine problems or difficult that he encounters. First time defined the intelligence as the change or modify the structure of cognitive uh, cognitive functioning to adapt so he emphasized on the ability to ad adapt to the changing demands of a life situation so the degree of adaptation is the key element in intelligence according to Feuerstein. Uh, Other conceptualizations of intelligence, other researchers suggest intelligence is composed of various processes such as perception, memory, reasoning, intention, generation of action, and attention. To some, we can say that human intelligence is the intellectual capacity of humans. It is characterized by perception, self-awareness, and volition. In addition to that, understanding, reasoning, are key elements in intelligence. Intelligence also includes the capacities to recognize patterns, comprehension, plan, planning ability, I mean planning ability, problem solving, and use language to, uh, to communicate. Intelligence enables humans to experience and see. Before finishing our lecture today, or end our lecture today, I would like to run through the different definition once again. In the first definition, it says the individual's ability to formulate and use abstract concepts. The second definition says intelligence defines the ability to solve a problem and to develop, to, to develop new insights and ideas. And as we said before, 
the meaning of insight is the capacity to gain an accurate and the deep understanding of someone or something. David Wexler defined the intelligence as the aggregate or global capacity of the individual to act purposefully, to think rationally, and to deal effective, effectively with his environment. Humphreys looked at the intelligence as the result of the process of acquiring, storing in memory, retrieving, combining, comparing, and using a new context. But Sir, uh, Sir, Sir Pert uh, considered intelligence as an innate general cognitive ability, and the human intellectual competence must entail a set of skills of problem solving, enabling the individual to resolve genuine problems or difficult ones that he encounters. Feuerstein defined intelligence as the change or modify the structure of cognitive functioning to adapt, so he emphasized on the role of adaptation in intelligence, your ability to adapt to the changing demands in your life situations. Other researchers suggest, suggest intelligence includes or is composed of various processes such as perception, memory, reasoning, uh, intention, generation of action, attention, abstraction, and so on. That's all in our uh, lecture three. In uh, next uh, lecture, we will cover some about some key and related or overlapped concepts that are important in our understanding of the meaning or uh, understanding the meaning of intelligence and the components of human intelligence and uh, abilities that included in the general ability which is referred to as intelligence. Thank you.